Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Laszlo Belady, and you might know me after an operating system problem that is named after me called Belady's Anomaly. I discovered my anomaly while researching a memory caching algorithm in 1966 while working at IBM Research. Today I will explain to you just what my anomaly is all about. Now imagine you are a bartender and that you make drinks using flavored ice cubes. In this analogy for the computer system, the bartender would be acting as the CPU or processor. They would be making the demands as to what they needed to assemble the drinks, and the ice cubes would act as their building blocks. Imagine that each ice tray is a container for a memory address. Each individual space for an ice cube would be known as a frame. This is the physical representation of memory on a CPU. The actual contents of the ice cubes, however, would be what we call pages. Paging is a way that computers use to control how its virtual machine's memory resources are shared. I have limited amount of slots to give, therefore I have to be careful how I split up my resources. I can give a few slots to Kool-Aid, a few slots to water, a few slots to cranberry juice, and a few slots to orange juice. If there is room in one slot, I can even share or combine two or more beverages. I can even leave a slot or more empty if I don't need them. When the beverage freezes, it is ready to use. In an actual system, the ice cube spot on the tray is never actually vacant unless the system releases the memory page. In other words, a page is unlike an ice cube in that the, it can be used many times. When a tray is empty, however, the beverage type can be switched, which represents having a different instruction set. Now have a look at all the types of ice cubes that I have available to me in my ice trays right now. Currently, my processor, or bartender, wants to make a drink involving a lemonade ice cube. However, there is no lemonade ice cube in the ice tray. This symbolizes what happens in a page fault in a normal computing system. What this means is that my bartender has to go into the fridge, which represents the backing store, and my bartender needs to put lemonade in the freezer before it can use it. That's when the page would be fed into the main memory and would be retrievable for instructions. There are several ways of ensuring that I won't have to go into the fridge for a new batch of ice cubes. One way to do this would be to look at the recipe and decide ahead of time what kind of ice cubes I would need in my freezer before starting. Another way of avoiding this problem is supposing that I have bigger ice cube slots that have a dozen combined juices. If I randomly wanted just one of the flavors in that bigger ice cube, I would simply use that one big ice cube over and over again, which would significantly cut down on my page fault rate. This is what would simulate having bigger page sizes. The final way of avoiding page faults would be simply to have more pages to choose from. In other words, I could simply have more ingredients at my disposal and as I was working, I'd realize what kind of ice cubes I would need. Normally this method is a foolproof one. Unless, that is, you have to contend with Belady's anomaly. However, for some reason, even though I have more ice cubes in my freezer, I still seem to be coming up short of the recipes that I want to build. The number of times I have to go back to the fridge is somehow larger when I have a certain amount of ice trays. And this is Belady's anomaly.